Hey everyone, welcome back. Randall Levy here with Henny Penny, and today we're going to talk about filtration troubleshooting on your Evolution Elite and your McDonald's LOV fryers. We're going to give a few different scenarios and show you how to troubleshoot those in the field. So, when I go into the store, I want to know if I hear that pump motor coming on or not. So let's take a look at how we're going to energize that in the filter menu. To enter our filter menu, we're going to press and hold either one of the F buttons until the filter menu comes up. This will be the same for a McDonald's control. To navigate through to get to fill from pan, we will use the right or the left arrow buttons. For McDonald's controls, we will use the up or down center buttons. Once we get to option five, we can go ahead and press the number one check mark to enter that menu. Then, to energize the filter pump, we're going to press our number one check mark again, and this in turn will go ahead and energize our filter pump motor. If we do not hear it, this is where we need to proceed with additional troubleshooting. Before resetting our thermal overload on our filter pump motor, we want to make sure that we give it at least 30 minutes to cool down, and also, for electric models, we want to make sure that VAT number one's power cord is fully plugged in as the filter pump motor gets its voltage from that power cord. Also, for electric models, we want to make sure that the two white reset circuit breaker buttons that will be located underneath the control panel are not in the trip state. If they are, we would need to push them up to reset them. Now that we've given it adequate time to cool down, we can come in to our thermal overload switch, which is located right here on the back of the motor, and we can push in on that really hard to go ahead and see if it is in the trip state. If it is in the trip state, we should hear and feel it click when we push in. Now that we've reset our filter pump motor, we've checked our VAT number one's power cord on electric models, and also our white circuit breakers underneath the control panel for electric models, now we can proceed to, after we've energized the filter pump motor and the filter menu, now is where we can check for our DC voltage going to our pump motor relay. Now please keep in mind, pump motor relay and AIF board location is going to depend on which model we are working on. On Evolution Elite gas models, it will be behind the right side side panel, which we already have removed here. On electric models, 200 series, that location is going to be behind control panel number two. And then on LVG, McDonald's gas units for 200 series, the AIF board location will be on the inside because LVG 200 series side panels are not removable. So it will be located right next to our jib container. So now that we've energized the filter pump motor, in the filter menu, now we can check for our DC voltage on both of our brown wires, and we can just check right here on these terminals. If we have our DC voltage for our coil on our relay, then we should have our line voltage on our incoming line voltage wires here and here. And if we have it there, then we should have line voltage, which is going to be AC voltage going out to our filter pump motor. If it is not closing and we have our DC voltage coming in on our coil, then we can determine we have a bad pump motor relay. If we have all of our necessary voltages on the pump motor relay, we have reset the filter pump motor and all other checks have been made. At this point, we could determine that we have a bad filter pump motor. So we've talked about a scenario where we didn't hear the filter pump motor come on after we energized it in the filter menu. We also talked about how we could troubleshoot that as well. So let's talk about a scenario where we do hear the filter pump motor come on, but what are our next steps? Well, the first thing I want to know as a technician, when I come into the store and I energize the filter pump motor within the filter menu, I want to know my next step is if I have suction right here at our female plug and play connection where our filter pan plugs into the fryer. So now that we have our filter pump motor energized, this is where we want to check for suction at our female plug and play connection by placing the palm of our hand over that opening and seeing if we have suction. If we have suction here, then we can determine most likely the problem is going to be on our filter pan side or possibly one of these three black rubber O-rings missing as these O-rings are crucial to sealing up this spot 
and creating the suction that we need. Also, we could have a problem with the inside of our filter pan assembly being excessively built up with crumbs or possibly even put together wrong. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Now that we have a better view of our pan here, we can see our three black rubber O-rings and we want to make sure that when we're taking this filter assembly apart, we have our crumb catcher here that's going to come out. Then we're going to have our hold down bar. This is where most of the time we're going to see a, an excessive amount of filter crumb build up on top of this filter pad. If this is the case, this is going to cause uh, the pump motor to struggle and to likely not bring up oil. Because as we checked before, we had suction at that plug and play. But if this is excessively built up with crumbs, it's not going to be able to pull that oil through that filter pad. If that is not the case, we can go ahead and remove our hold down bar. Then we can go ahead and remove our filter pad. And last in here, but certainly not least, we have our woven filter screen assembly. This is important because if this piece here is not on the bottom of the filter pan, then it will not provide the proper air gapping needed to be able to suck the oil through. So in the event that the fryer was not bringing any oil up and the filter pad is clean, we could have a situation where this filter pad was put in first and then the screen on top of it. And if this is the case, it will certainly not allow any oil to be brought up from the filter pan. Something else that we want to keep in mind while we have this apart is in the event that a store is not using the proper filter pad, we could have a situation where crumbs have gotten past that point and have now clogged up our drain in the bottom of this filter pan, causing it to not allow it to bring any oil up. So these are things we want to keep in mind with the filter pan in our troubleshooting. So now let's talk about a scenario where we do not have suction at our plug and play with the pump motor energized. Now we need to determine whether the problem is our pump assembly or if we potentially have a problem with the back of the fryer with maybe a clogged check valve or something along those lines. A quick way to narrow that down is to go ahead and take our outgoing discharge line off of the outgoing side of the pump going back to our selector valve or our oil manifold. With doing this and taking it off at this fitting, we can now check and see if we have suction here. If we do, that's going to tell us that our pump assembly is in good working order and there is no need to proceed with taking that apart to check the internals of that pump. Now, if we take this line off right here and we still don't have suction, then that is going to let us know that we do potentially have a problem with the inside of our pump assembly, possibly with worn rollers, possibly a worn pump cap O-ring, or maybe even a leaking seal kit. So this is a quick way that we can narrow down whether the problem is going to be on our pump or with the back of the fryer with check valves or other components as well. So we covered a lot of different things here, right? We talked about number one, if our filter pump motor doesn't come on when we energize it. We talked about some of the causes that could be related to that, possibly our pump motor relay, also on electric models, we're going to have our VAT number one power cord as well as our white circuit reset breakers. We also talked about a scenario where we don't have suction versus if we do. It's an easy way to break that down. So if we did have suction at the plug and play connection when our pump motor was energized, then we know like we have mentioned before, most likely that problem is going to be in our filter pan or possibly related to those three black rubber O-rings. If we didn't have suction at our plug and play connection, then we talked about checking out the pump or possibly beyond the pump with check valves and we described on how to troubleshoot that and those necessary steps. If you found this video helpful, remember to check out our other troubleshooting videos as well as part replacement videos. And remember everyone, until next time, stay safe out there.